Okay, we know that a black hole actually uh, curves time and space, the fabric itself of time and space. This is uh, the fabric of time and space. We have a black hole right here, and it's got curvature of time and space. It's basically a fabric, uh, realistically a fabric. Um, here we have a planet that uh, the weight of it actually curves this time and space right here. Then we have here another planet that also is being curved, and the gravity itself is just rolling down to the black hole. So uh, when a planet is rolled to the black hole, basically it's like going downhill. The gravity pulls it and, 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 and gains speed because of its own gravity. It's being pulled this way. So anything that uh, ma has mass will roll over and into the black hole. So how do you ex escape a black hole? Or how do you become stationary and not uh, drag into it? Um, you have this warp drive that I invented. And this warp drive has uh, wheels. And these wheels uh, gain mass. Uh, on uh, The wheel itself gains mass. Um, from, uh, let's say, for example purposes, uh, 1 million Gs will equal 1 pound, or 1 ton, in this case 1 ton, will equal uh, 1 million tons. So these uh, teeth also gain mass. So in this uh, scenario, uh, the tires gain so much mass, they actually dig into time and space, the fabric itself, and then they can climb out. So this is a warp drive more powerful than the actual black hole. Uh, the simplicity is so simple. Uh, you have an object that gains mass, and by itself digging into the fabric of uh, time and space like this planet, just by being heavy, it actually digs into it. So if you could design a tire system uh, that actually has these uh, uh, gripping uh, bars outside of the wheel, it will grab into the, uh, the fabric of time and space. And this is the actual wheel design. Mm -hmm. These are multiple engines, one spinning on top of the other one, uh, already rotating. So since it's already rotating, the top engine is going to spin on top of a moving surface, making it faster. For example purposes, let's say that each one's uh, uh, each engine with its own power source is spinning at 200,000 uh, g, uh, g forces. So the top one the same and all the way down. Uh, so all these are spinning uh, 200,000 Gs for example purposes. And let's say you have 10 engines, so at the end result, the wheel will be spinning, this wheel right here, is spinning at 1 million Gs. So you have to have this, uh, well, this, um, uh, this wheel spinning at 1 million Gs. So let's say this, uh, uh, this material is 1 ton. So uh, this material, by spinning 1 million Gs, will be 1 million tons. Okay? So that you make this uh, wheel heavy enough to uh, dig into the uh, time and space itself. Now you still need something to hold on to the sides because um, by itself it, it just keep on rolling. It's not going to come out of the uh, um, uh, of an inclined surface. So by that you need something to grip into uh, time and space. So now you need these rods. These rods are sticking out of the wheel. These rods also spin at 200,000 G's or more and let's say you have 10 of these for example purposes so 200,000 G's times 10 equals um, um, I'm sorry about that early calculations it's actually 2 million G's 2 million G's times uh, 1 pound equals 2 million pounds and correction on the other one that was also um, and this one uh, it's 2 million G's so this will actually be uh, instead of one ton, it's actually one ton will be uh, two million Gs will be two million tons. But what I'm trying to say is that you can increase the uh, the mass of these wheels by the uh, rotation of spin, and they could dig in into time and space, and they actually would be just like a bicycle tire on top of a a surface because time and space is a fabric of time. It's also a surface where you could actually have something roll into it like just like a vehicle or a tire or, um, but this case um, you dig into it and it's not going to go nowhere anyway uh, there you go guys